Hello soldiers, it is Moonwalking Kingdom back at again with another Michael Jackson video. If you came from the MJ Fangirl debate the other day, I want to say welcome to my channel. And if you are here and new, I do a ton of uh, album reviews, I do a ton of reactions like I'm going to do today. As well as a lot of interactive live streams and some fun facts that I will leave until the end of this video. So, welcome aboard the Moonwalking Kingdom guys. <laughs> All right, so we're going to be re reacting to a, uh, a couple snippets from this interview during Off the Wall era in 1979. So unfortunately, due to copyright, uh, this app can, is not allowing me to uh, do videos that uh, are copyrighted. Uh, I need to find some other app for me to do reactions on um, so I can do these. But uh, I'm going to put the full interview and the full segment down in the description uh, they have a lot of stuff from the Triumph tour and some of the interview, uh, some uh, with, with with the brothers and stuff. It was it was really fun to watch actually. Uh, you had a lot of great um stuff around this this year. This is like off the wall era, um, and really, this is when he was happier in my opinion. Like no, no allegations or or anything really bad. So let's just get right to this video. There are some people who feel that a person such as yourself who's been on stage since the age of five. Yeah, the uh, Jackson Five, and yeah, I re really the um, he had to deal with his father and stuff. But just remember, guys, this this, this, this is something very important. I know people say, "Oh, Joe Jackson was was a monster and stuff," but uh, you, you have to be very very. Very careful with that because my, Joe Jackson was actually the person responsible for making the Jacksons who they were and Michael uh, being famous, you know, because if it wasn't for Joe, there would be no Michael Jackson or the Jackson 5. So this, this is something that a lot of people need to know. And this will be definitely covered in my in my documentary for sure. So very important. Uh, and just remember, it, it, it was a very different time period. And yeah. Has grown up in a fantasy that your life is a fantasy. <laughs> uh. His laugh just cures depression in every way. Or my sadness. Or whenever I'm down and I and I hear that laugh, my God. I have seen many worlds, not just one. I mean imagine from the age of five you've been able to create a whole world. That's true. It's, uh, that's how I feel. Your family was not... That's that, 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 that was the house in Gary, Indiana. You were wealthy when you started out. You were pretty young. I don't know if you would remember. Were there a lot of sacrifices involved? Yeah, we weren't wealthy, but we weren't poor. My father always prepared for the family, as well as my mother. Always wonderful. And that's very important. They made sure we... You know, got the right things for ourselves. Yeah. Strong parents are, I think, are very important, especially in our situation. If he hit me, I would hit him back, which was terrible. Oh man. And they would, I would run around the house and hide, and all that stuff. There were other interviews when he was talking about his father. Well, this one, and also if you look at the. Um, the Martin Bashir documentary. Oh my God! Why am I saying his name? But he he does talk about his father there. There was another speech where he breaks down crying, and talking about his father. That was in the Oxford speech in two thousand one. Um, very very a uh, powerful speech by the way. Um, uh, I, I definitely I think that's gonna be another uh, thing I uh, put down in the description. Um, so yeah. But I really get it more than anybody. Do you think your father was too strict? Yes. No, he's going to kill me. Uh... <laughs> yeah, you see how he's laughing about it here, but then later on he gets a little emotional about it. Yeah. Uh, he's going to get you still worried about <laughs> that. <here? laughs> uh... Well, he feels that he was strict. I'm glad he said it. Now I'll <laughs> I remember that part. Uh, yes. <laughs> Did he? What does it feel like to see that? People yelling, Michael. Yes. Michael, two different people. On and off stage. 
but I formed a personality that's uh that's me <laughs> yep yep you sure did can't get away from that it's just, it's just the whole overall thing is it's, it's hard to deal with it really is it's, it's, a, it's a hard situation Man. It's something I have to put up with you've always been Michael Jackson on stage <laughs> I guess yeah that's true uh, it's, it's, a, it's a hard situation Definitely. Uh, well, yeah, um, with the whole thing about when he wrote Working Day and Night, and, and most people don't really know what that song is about. So he, what, what he said here is that he's two different people. On stage and off stage, he's someone else. And the fact that he was working a lot during his life, uh, with the constant rehearsals and everything, really that's why he, he wrote Working Day and Night, because when you're famous, you've got a lot in your mind. you 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 got a lot... You you have a lot on your plate when you're famous, so and he had to work. So, mm. it is and it's something I have to put up with. <laughs> it must be hard to have real friends. Yes. Do you feel grown up? I've been around grown people, you know, since I was five. I mean, on tour, backstage with all the musicians and the singers and. Yeah. I feel grown up for ages for a long, all my life. You know, um, Michael's fear is um, growing. He always had this fear of um, getting old. But let's, well, let's see what he says here. There's other kinds of sounds of music that I love to do. It hurts what is inside of me and it can't get out and it's hidden from the world. Yeah. Oh, we saw a clip from the Dangerous Era, but they... Why? Why is it your favorite? It has a wonderful feeling when I walk in there, I just get... This, this, is, a, this is definitely from a documentary of like having everything in there. Some of this high-quality footage came from the... Um, I believe it was the Journey to Motown Off the Wall documentary. You, you, you had some high-quality footage. Spike, Spike Lee does a great job with that, so. So excited, the lights and the people. It's just like, almost like going to a play, a performance. I usually go there and Liza's there, Liza Minnelli, and she pulls me out on the floor and we get to dance and, and that's <laughs> just, we just have the time of our lives. Well, Brooke Shields supposed to be there. Uh, she is one of my favorite groups. I like songs that touch the heart and that stay with a person for a lifetime. And that's oh, yeah. important to me and to the people. And that's what I'm here for. Yeah. And I get things done the way I want them to be done. Are you like you always have? <laughs> Willful? In what way? I mean, are you? You have your own ideas of what you want to do, and you you're oh, gonna yeah. do them? Oh yeah, I deal through feeling. And then you want to act on it? Yeah. Actually, you're becoming like a stage addict. I really I seen that clip. Like when there are off days and there is no show, I'm up at night dancing just the same. That is so me. That is so me. Man, the, the, that's literally what I do every night. <laughs> it's really strange. <laughs> I guess I'm an addict. <laughs> <Can't help. laughs> yeah. I think a man is a person who achieves his goal and make all his dreams come true for himself and for the people. And what you enjoy yep. most about being on stage is? It's a great question. Yep. So I feel I'm doing my job, and that's what makes me happy. So we're getting, we're feeding one another, and it's a wonderful thing. Michael's not here. I let things create themselves. So that's meant to be. It'll happen. And uh, I believe in the force, and um, it'll tell me when. Yeah. He wanted his music to make a difference. He wanted his music to heal. Oh yeah, sure did. Um, we learned a lot from this interview. Uh, a lot of um, things in this interview and um, really um, he always has felt very happy on stage but especially in like before like prior to the allegations it, it, it like it, and I noticed that there's differences between these interviews and the later interviews so it's really nice to pull pull in like the pre um, dangerous, like, like, like the, the off the wall thriller and bad interviews. He's a lot more happy here. So definitely, um, am noticing that. 
and then in like the the uh the invincible and mature it's all depressing and it makes me sad so i'm very happy that i was able to react to this and um this kind of put a smile on my face because like, he was a hard-working man and and he, he he dealt with a lot even in his youth and in his adulthood and but he overcame that so this was a really great video to react to i always close this with a fun fact to end the video did you guys know that this day september 12 1987 michael jackson started his bad world tour in tokyo japan um wow this this is like i said one of my favorite michael jackson tours and if you guys want to check out my favorite michael jackson tour video it is also going to be in the description so thank you guys so much for watching this video if you guys enjoy please put a like comment and share with all the soldiers of love and moonwalkers all around the world so i will see you all in the next video keep tuning in guys you just exited the moonwalking kingdom say goodbye to michael and i'll see you all in the next video bye bye